Hello, good day everyone. JC De Guzman here once again for our daily top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis for June 24, 2019. As always, everything that I'm going to say in this video is geared for or geared toward short term, short term trading purposes. And uh, today I'm going to discuss 10 different stocks in preparation for the next trading day, Tuesday, June 25th, 2019. Let's begin with the first in, the, in our list. We have VUL. This company or this stock closed today at 1.5 per share. Major support is at 1.03. Resistance is at 1.9. This horizontal line that you see at 1.3 is the midterm resistance for VUL, which uh, it happened to, uh, it already rose above 1.3, closing at 1.5 today. Uh, I also like today's bullishness because uh, the last price was uh, higher than the uh, volume weighted average price of 1.45 so that's a sign of a strong bullishness when the closing price is uh, or when the volume weighted average price is close closer to the intraday high than the intraday low okay so that's another sign i think this is the first time that i have uh, emphasized that one so please uh, take note of that Again, when the VWAP is closer to the intraday high and when the closing price is also cl uh, uh, closer to the intraday high, that's uh, uh, a confirmation of a bullish stance or bullish sentiment of the, of, uh, the prevailing trading of, uh, for any stock. Okay, MACD is still moving above the uh, signal line. Therefore, the conditions of our 10 SMA and MACD combination uh, remain true okay so the upward momentum is also very strong for VUL RSI is still uh, relatively distant from its uh, classical overbought level so there's still more room for VUL to test the resistance at 1.9 now let's take a look at its trade and volume distribution chart for us to find out if the dominant range is closer to the intraday high than the intraday low and apparently that is the case the dominant range is uh, between 1.4 to 1.5 which is uh, closer to the intraday high than the intraday low i remain bullish for vul it's uh, you have a data driven reason to top up and to enter a new position for those who are planning to enter a new position by the looks of the just by looking at the position of the candles last candlestick uh, relative to its uh, immediate support and resistance I, you would see you will you will see that you have you will get a better potential reward than your potential risk your potential risk is at 1.3 your potential reward is at 1.9 where is 1.5 where is this candlestick closer it's closer to the uh, potential risk so you have a bigger upside than your potential downside so you have a data driven reason to enter a new position but don't enter a new position at any price make sure that you do it within the dominant range that I have shown you on VUL's trade and volume distribution chart. Next in our list is uh, Chelsea once again. This stock closed today at 8.43. Support is at 7.18, but the major support is actually at 6.2. This is a midterm support at 7.18. Resistance is at 8.94. So I'm seeing a perfect... Uh, um, the conditions of our 10 SM and MACD combo have been perfectly met on Chelsea's daily chart. And uh, let me just remove this one. This was from the previous day's analysis. The upward momentum is still very strong. Meanwhile, RSI is already playing inside the classical overbought level for Chelsea. This should not be uh, an alarming thing. This should not be a problem for those who have had Chelsea for a while already because you you can stick with your trailing stop loss and i do hope you have one okay for the new entrance make sure that you calculate your reward to risk ratio before you do a test buy even if i am already even if i am bullish on chelsea you have to calculate your reward to risk ratio first okay okay so you don't just enter a new position just because i said that i am bullish on chelsea if i am bullish on chelsea but uh uh, there's a bigger potential risk than the potential reward then that's not going to uh, benefit you uh, benefit you from you know from trading the stock it, it will benefit those who have been 
trading the stock but not for you if you are yet to enter a new position okay that's the importance of calculating your reward to risk ratio if you are a new entrant or if you are planning to enter a new trade a new position for for any stock now showing let me show you the trade and volume distribution chart the dominant range is between one uh, between eight point thirty five to eight point forty three eight point thirty five to eight point thirty three eight point forty three that's in favor of the buyers so i've given you my i've given you my overall sentiment and recommendations already for chelsea next we have ssi it closed today at 3.6 support is at 3.44 the psychological resistance which is in confluence with the 61.8 percent of the up fibonacci extension is at 4.23 for the new entrance of course if you're going to use a 3.44 as your uh, support level and uh, 4.23 as your resistance area you will get a, a, a more attractive potential reward than your potential risk okay i am seeing a perfect bullish alignment among the three simple moving averages of ssi and also macd is poised to cross above the signal line i am also seeing a strong upward momentum for ssi on the daily chart rsi is still quite distant from its classical overbought level now let me show you SSI is a trade and volume distribution chart. It shows here that the dominant range is between 3.54 to uh, 3.6, or we can we can say uh, we can say 3.62 also, 3.54 to 3.62. Anyhow, that's in favor of the buyers or today's bulls. So I remain bullish on SSI. Make sure that you do an upward adjustment on your trailing stop loss. And that piece of advice is for those who have had SSI in their portfolio for short-term trading purposes. New entrants, you can do a uh, you can enter you can do a test buy within that range that I have shared or that I have shown uh, to you. I am bullish on SSI. I see no signs of weakness, especially that the, uh, the closing price is. Uh, or the VWAP is closer to the uh, closing price. VWAP is at 3.56. Next, we have GSMI. This stock closed today at 59.4. Immediate support is at 44.5. For the psychological resistance, which is in confluence with the 61.8% of the up Fibonacci extension, is located at 70.5. So, new entrants calculate your reward to risk ratio. Your support is at 44.5. Resistance is at 70.5. Okay, the conditions of the 10 SMA and MACD combination remain intact. I am also seeing a perfect bullish alignment among the three simple moving averages of GSMI. Uh, consider also, especially you, you uh, new, uh, especially those uh, who are planning to enter a new trade on GSMI. Take note that RSI, it's it's RSI is already playing above and beyond the classical overbought level. But looking at this volume, looking at the size of the, today's volume and last week's volume, especially uh, uh, last Thursday and Friday, I don't see any any signs of a weakening weakening upward strength on GSMI based on the size of the uh, the volume last Thursday, Friday, and including today's. Also, foreign investors are highly participative on the daily. Uh, trade of GSMI, for example, today they registered a net foreign buying worth uh, 5.4 million pesos, net foreign buying. Okay, upward momentum remains very strong for GSMI. The uh, dominant range is, let's, let's uh, maximize this uh, window. And today's closing price at 59.4, that's closer to the intraday high. The dominant range that I see here is between 58 to 59 Point four. 58 to 59.4 okay it's in favor of the buyers so i am bullish on gsmi uh, let me repeat my uh, advice for those who are planning to enter a new trade for those who have had gsmi i don't have any problem with you because uh, you, you can just simply follow the trend and stick with your trading stop loss and you can easily decide to uh, top up because you have already entered a new position for a while already now for the new entrance let me focus to you 
make sure that you are happy with your reward risk ratio before you do a test buy and consider the fact that GSMI's RSI is already above and beyond its classical overbought level. Are you a high risk trader? If you are a high risk trader, then you can do a test buy if you are happy with your reward risk ratio. But if you have just opened your account three days ago or a week ago, I suggest not to trade uh, uh, GSMI yet, especially that its historical volatility gives it a, a moderate risk level. A few more points, six more points or seven more points, GSMI will have a high risk level already. Okay, as far as its historical volatility is concerned. So consider those things in your decision. I am not here to insinuate or compel or uh, pollute your decision to, yeah, go ahead and buy GSMI. No, I'm not. That's not my job. My job here is, just, is to interpret to you what I'm seeing and why I, what I think about it, not just based on what I think, feel, or believe, but based on how I mix and match all of this data, how I synthesize everything so that you can, you can make a decision based on your own investment horizon and risk tolerance. Okay? And of course, through my uh, experience-based uh, interpretation of data and trades. All right? So next we have PX. PX closed today at 3.6. Support is at 2.84. The support area is between 2.5 to 2.9. That's why I, I have plotted two horizontal lines so that are close to each other. Midterm midterm resistance is at 3.65. Major resistance is at 4.42. The conditions of our 10 SMA and MACD combination remain intact. And the RSI is still quite distant from the classical overbought level. The upward momentum remains strong. So it's, it's uh, more likely for PX to touch if not to go beyond 3.65, it's midterm resistance. So I'm pretty excited uh, to see that happening, especially for those of you who, who have had PX, who caught the uh, confirmed uh, buy signal uh, when the conditions of the 10 SMA and MACD combination were, were met last uh, May, uh, in the last week of May. Okay, so now let me show you PX's uh, trade and volume distribution chart. So here, with, with, with respect to today's closing price at 3.6, which happens to be one fluctuation away from, the, from touching the intraday high, I would say that the dominant range is between 3.5 to 3.6 here. It's still closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. Therefore, it's in favor of the buyers. And besides that, PX says a VWAP of, uh, what's the VWAP? Uh, it's it's uh, 3.4 to 3. The view of is 3.43. It's closer to the. It's, let me just make sure that's three. It's 3.55. It's closer to the closing price or the intraday high of PXS candlestick for today. So that adds up to the bullishness to my bullish sentiment toward or for PX. So you can do you can top up and you can also do a test by. You have a data driven reason to do both. Uh, for the new entrance, as always, calculate your reward to risk ratio. Uh, you can use uh, 2.84 as your support level and for the resistance you can already use I suggest you use 4.42 because if you're going to use uh, 3.65 definitely there's no way for you to enter a new position because it's already closer to 3.65 the last price is already too close to, to 3.65 and too far from 2.84 therefore obviously that will not give you an attractive potential reward and potential risk by just doing a simple arithmetic so we have to extend your resistance area, area as your basis at 4.42, okay? Now, uh, for the next stock in our list, we have Maxis. Maxis closed today at 13.82. Support is at 11.84. Resistance is at 16 pesos per share. It's already still above the, the 10 SMA. The conditions of the 10 SMA and MACD combination remain intact. RSI is far from the classical overbought level but due to today's uh, red candlestick it bent uh, uh, bent towards the southward direction including the positive DMI by the way the upward momentum of Maxis is not yet uh, very strong okay uh, there's a I see a possibility for for the redness of 
maxes to continue tomorrow due to the size of today's volume okay it might continue to play sideways be between 13.5 to 14 pesos per share for uh, a day or two i think or i i i forecast so but that's that should not be a threat or a problem for those who have had maxes since uh since the second or third week of june okay because uh if you enter the new position in the second week of June, then you were able to catch maxes uh, around 12.5 to 12.5 uh, 12 to 13 pesos per share. Okay, that was the time when the conditions of the 10 SM and MACD combination were first or were recently met. Okay, let me show you maxes uh, trade and volume distribution chart with respect to today's closing price of 13.82. The dominant range is between. 13.8 to 13.9, obviously closer to the intraday low than the intraday high or in favor of the sellers. If you have had maxes, you are in a better position to just uh, follow your trailing stop loss. Hold your position, do not top up. I repeat, do not top up. And if you are planning to enter a new position, please put maxes in your money, in your watch list for now. Don't enter a new position unless and until you see the four-point criteria that we always monitor becoming perfectly present as well. What are those four-point criteria? The last candlestick should be green. The volume-weighted average price should be, uh, or the last price should be above the VWAP. Volume should be green and should be higher than the 50% of the stock's 10-day volume average. And last criterion, the dominant range based on the trade and volume distribution chart should be closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. When all four are present, then consider doing a test buy. If only three are present, postpone the plan to do a test buy. And when you test buy, do it within the dominant range and not at any random price. Alright. Okay, next we have... We're done with maxes. Now let's move to PXP. PXP closed today at 7.7. .7. Support is at 6.78. Resistance is at 10.05. Should it uh, cross above 10.05, that will make 13.63 as its next resistance level. RSI is in the neutral level. The, uh, the, negative DMI is, the negative DMI has already crossed above the positive DMI, so uh, an exchange of sentiment here. So if this redness will continue and move closer to 6.78, we might see uh, the downtrend momentum. We might see the momentum being in favor of the bears okay let's see macd macd is still moving above the signal line but i think as soon as the price breaks below the the, the 10 sma which is closer to 6.78 we might see the conditions of the 10 sma and macd combination becoming uh, uh out of proportion or becoming invalidated so needless to say uh, pxp is now moving in a sideways level although it's not yet officially in a sideways level level because uh, the ADX has not been moving below 25 points for for over 30 days yet not yet there but I think uh, PXP will just continue to trade sideways or trade the range between 6.8 to 10 points uh, 6.8 to 10.05 or not yet no not really 10.05 but 6.8 to perhaps around uh, uh, 8.7 uh, uh, and until uh, until a strong catalyst uh, comes out and make those PXP traders uh, think that PXP is already, already too cheap to be ignored. But for now, I suggest not to enter a new position yet on PXP. Okay? No signs. No signs to hurry. PXP's uh, trade and volume distribution chart shows that the dominant range is between 7.7 .7 to 7.9, which is in favor of the, which is closer to the intraday low than the intraday high okay next i'm bearish on pxp by the way next we have apx apx closed today at 1.22 it succumbed or it uh, broke below it was it it failed to sustain its ascent above 1.27 last friday support is at 1.06 Mid-term resistance is at 1.27, while the major support is at 1.4, followed by 1.57. Today's uh, red volume is uh, too tall uh, that, 
and it influences my sentiment to think that the descent in price is more likely to continue. So with that said, don't hurry in entering a new position. If you have had APX since the last week of May, you are better off sticking with your trailing stop loss. And if you're going to ask me if uh, I see a data-driven reason to preempt your trailing stop loss, then I would say, yes, I do see because of the stall volume here. So you can preempt your trailing stop loss. Preempting your trailing stop loss means selling even before your TSL or trailing stop loss gets hit. RSI is uh, uh, downward sloping already. Foreign investors registered a net foreign selling worth 2.5 million pesos today. I am bearish on APX and for what it's worth, the trade and volume distribution chart with respect to the closing price of 1.22 shows that the dominant range is between 1.22 to 1.26. That's clearly in favor of the sellers. I am bearish on APX. Don't buy it yet again. Okay. Next, we have uh, San Miguel Food and Beverage or FB, not Facebook. It closed today at 109.5. Support is at 104. Resistance is at 118. Okay, here, there's one interesting, uh, that I, uh, interesting thing that I have noticed here because one of you asked me in the private client's forum today if I do recommend uh, uh, selling FB. Here's, my, here's what I've noticed. Yes, it registered a red candlestick today that did not uh, open at a price higher than the last Friday's uh, closing price. But take a, note, take a look at the size of today's volume. Compare the, this volume with, the previous, with last week's daily volume. If, uh, if uh, the majority of traders are really or were really bearish on FB, then we should be seeing a massive, not massive, but a higher or a taller, taller red candlestick. Taller than what? Taller than perhaps the individual volume bars from last week. But we're, we're not seeing, we're just seeing an, uh, a relatively smaller volume bar for today when, compare, when you compare it with the size of the of the daily volume bars from last week or maybe including two weeks ago. What does that mean? In layman's terms, if FB's traders did not see any compelling reason to join the uh, massive selling activity for today. So there was no massive selling activity that happened today. Meaning to say they were the majority uh, the majority of traders were not interested to sell down FB. Many of them are still holding their position. Now if you have had FB since uh, when you bought, if you were able to buy FB when it was close to 100 pesos or 104, you can still hold your position provided your the current price is still trading above your trailing stop loss. Okay, so now let's say you bought FB when it was trading near 80 pesos. Should you sell now? Do I see uh, a data-driven reason for you to preempt your trailing stop loss? No. I do not see a data-driven, I do not see a compelling data-driven reason to preempt your trailing stop loss given the relatively smaller, small size of volume for today. Okay, so don't panic. If you have had FB whether when it was near 100 or whether when it was at 80 pesos. And what you've heard is for those who have had FB. Sir, how about us who are planning to enter a new trade on FB? Shall we buy FB tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I suggest you wait for the appearance of the four-point criteria first. Okay, It's a pretty strict guideline when it comes to entering a new position. It's a lot easier to make a, a decision, a data-driven decision when you have had a position, when you are already inside, or let me reverse that, when the stock is already in your portfolio. It's, it's a lot easier to make a data-driven decision than when you are yet to add the stock in your portfolio that's why we are we have to be very strict with that so that to you know in order, in order for you to reduce the the risk the risk uh, it's part of the risk management by being uh, 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 stricter when it comes to adding new stocks than when than uh, when adding more shares so new shares more share versus more shares okay so wait for the four-point criteria, the appearance of the four-point criteria before you enter a new position on FB. Okay, next, I'm still bullish on FB by the way. RSI is still far from the classical overbought level. The 10 SMA and MACD combo, uh, conditions, the conditions of the 
Okay, so in, on FB's uh, on FB's chart, the the RSI is still in the neutral level. So so there. Okay, so let me show you FB's uh, trade and volume distribution chart. It shows here that the dominant range is between at 109.3 to 109, or we can say 109 to 109.5. That's your dominant range. It's still, it's in favor of the, it's closer to the uh, intraday high than the intraday low, technically speaking. Uh, the, only, the only thing that uh, makes us uh, pull back a bit from our, we draw a bit from our bullish sentiment on FP is the fact that uh, it's, it opened today at a price that is lower than last Friday's closing price. Nonetheless, when you, when you expand your chart, you, you can say that FP remains uh, bullish. Okay, it remains bullish. The upward momentum is still strong. Okay, on on FB's chart, despite the uh, despite uh, a relatively weaker opening price for today on this stock, I remain bullish on FB, especially for those who have had FB for uh, for uh, for over a month or two already. For the new entrants, as always, wait for the appearance of the four point criteria before you do a test buy. Okay, last but not the least, we have Jerry. Jerry closed today at 1.27. Let me just plot the support and resistance levels here. Okay, we can have one here. Then the resistance right here. Okay, there you go. All right, so the support for Jerry is at 1.2, resistance is at 1.5. Uh, today's VWAP is at 1.29, and foreign investors registered a net foreign selling worth 1.4 million for Jerry. It's still relatively insignificant compared to foreign investors' participation among index stocks. The conditions of the 10 SMA and MACD combination have already been invalidated for uh, over a week already, over a week or two already. The downward momentum remains strong. RSI is pointing towards the classical oversold level. It's not yet there, but it's poised to enter that territory. So don't hurry in entering a new position on Jerry. You should have already locked your locked in your gains when the price was uh, 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 testing the resistance at 1.5. And by now, your trailing stop loss should have already been hit. The trade and volume distribution chart of Jerry shows that the dominant range is between 1.27 and 1.27 to 1.3. It's in favor of the sellers. All right, so you have heard my technical analysis for Jerry. I am bearish on this stock. And this is uh, the video. This is my analysis for today's top five gainers and top five losers analysis in preparation for the next trading day on Tuesday, June 25. Uh, I do hope you will have a profitable trading day tomorrow and for the rest of the week. My name is JC De Guzman, and if you have follow-up questions, please post in the private clients forum. Have a great day.